Hola, cage fighting connoisseurs. This is Kid Nate of BloodyElbow.com. I'm here with my review of the Strike Force Rousey vs. Kaufman card last night. Sorry for the delay in shooting this. I spent all day in airline hell. Thanks, United. It's wonderful. Really enjoyed it. Anyway, to get to the card, I, I gotta say, overall, I'd give it probably a three and a half to four out of five stars. Um, uh, action packed card, totally delivered, had a good range of fights, a lot of solid finishes, some wars, pretty much everything you'd want from a from an evening of, of MMA. Let's run through the card. I'll start with the prelims. And I gotta say I enjoyed the prelims th thoroughly. This is one of the first times I've really sat down and, and watched the uh, Showtime Extreme prelims live. Usually I record them because I'm working on other stuff and watch them later. Um, and I really enjoyed the, the whole package. Uh, made for a little bit of a long evening. Uh, always does uh, watching that many fights in a row, but you know, it's worth it if you're a cage fighting connoisseur like us. Um, the first fight was one of the few stinkers on the card. Bobby Green versus Matt, Reith Matt Ricehouse. I really think that Ricehouse had nothing to offer Green. Green figured out that quickly, but then Green just coasted to a decision. Um, I'd have to give that. I'd have to give that fight one star. Not, 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 not impressive. Uh, like to see Bobby Green tested uh, by a better opponent next time. Not sure. You know, one thing I will say is I like Strike Force's pattern of kind of um, grabbing up uh, the talent that they can sign. I think uh, creates some interesting dynamics since. Strike Force has come to be seen by fighters as a dead end for their career. The fighters that will sign on to, to fight with Strike Force or are more lower end fighters with uh, less to lose. And so they're more uh, prone to taking risks. And we'll talk about that more later. Um, uh, then uh, the next fight was Jermaine Durandami versus Hiroka Yamanaka. That was another one, not, not a great fight, not bad. Uh, Yamanaka was expected to, to grapple or. Uh, and couldn't get her down, frankly. And uh, and De Romney was good. It was a good fight. I'd give that. I'd probably give that a two out of five. It started off the evening a little slow. Then the next one was weird. Adlan Amagov, uh, one of her, uh, beat Keith Berry at the TKO. Uh, really, just frankly, just a weird bad stoppage. One of Herb Dean's worst performances I've seen in a long time. Amagov hurt um, Barry with a, a straight kick to the knee, which is illegal in California. It's legal under the Unified Rules, but illegal in California. And that dropped him, and then he was hitting him. Um, and then uh, Barry was trying to tell Dean he was okay. He's not supposed to talk to the ref. That made Dean sort of panic and stop the fight. Uh, afterwards, uh, they had Dean Mike's talking to Barry and telling him that he shouldn't have been talking to him. And that's why he stopped the fight. All in all, uh, kind of a botched fight because of, um, of uh, Dean's performance. But the headliner of the prelims, Misha Tate versus Julie Kedzi, was so good that it made up for the whole rest of the card. This is one of the best fights. Uh, Tomas Rios said this is one of the best fights he'd ever seen. I, I have to concur. This is definitely, I don't know, one of the best fights I've ever seen, but definitely one of the best fights I've seen recently. It had everything. Uh, Kedzi came out as an underdog and just put a beating on tape from the beginning. But Tate came back, and, and there were multiple momentum swings. The grappling uh, between the ladies was excellent. Um, and then, you know, in the third round, it really looked like Kedzie had survived the storm and was going to finish Tate, but Tate got her down and got that arm bar. I'd give that fight five stars. And that, coming at the end of the card, made me forget, really, until until I went through them uh, one by one, that the rest of the card was pretty bad on the prelims. But one great fight, especially at the end of the night, uh, or at the end of the show, made for a, for a great night of prelims on Showtime Extreme. Then we moved to the main card, and Ovin St. Pru and TJ Cook got things off to a really roaring start. And this is where, uh, you know, TJ Cook is a, a journeyman, not even a full-time fighter, that uh, was brought in probably to lose to OSP. And um, I thought he did excellent. He came out, showed he could hit hard and hang with OSP. OSP's got good offense and weak defense, so that, that made, you know, uh, for a good fight. Cook was able to land on him, but then o OSP landed back and really hurt Cook. And it wasn't until the third round when Cook's uh, inability to train and be in proper condition for a three-round fight uh, showed up, and, and OSP just pounced and, and creamed him with a left hook uh, that finished him. Um, but all in all, I'd have to give that fight four stars. It was a it was a great performance by Cook. I look forward to seeing him again, and um, and I thought it was a it was a good test for OSP and a good uh, good fight to get him back on the winning track. And then uh, up next, Anthony Smith upset Lumumba Sayers. Uh, Sayers was expected to win. Anthony Smith is pretty another unheralded guy from the Midwest that signed with Strike Force recently, uh, but he came out and put it to Sayers. I got the triangle choke submission pretty quickly in the first round, and and uh, 
just a, a weak performance from Sayers, but Smith showed some aggression and, and uh, good addition to the Strike Force roster. And, and Sayers uh, learned a good lesson, I think, and I think he'll come back stronger. Then uh, Tarek Safadine uh, and Roger Bowling had a good three round fight. Kind of slowed down the action a little bit because it went three rounds, and Safadine's not the most uh, exciting fighter. I mean, it was a classic matchup of Bowling, who's a hard hitter, not the most polished striker. Safadine, a very polished striker, not the hardest hitter. Um, Safadine controlled the fight. Didn't really set the woods on fire, but, but put on a good performance. I've been saying setting the woods on fire too much. I apologize. Uh, I'll give you your money back. Um, that fight, I'd probably give uh, three stars, three out of five stars. Up next, uh, Ronaldo Jacare Souza um, put a beating on Derek Brunson. Not really a surprise to anybody who's been watching. And uh, I have to say that Jacare is one of the fighters I would most like to see compete in the middleweight division of the UFC. He's really uh, in limbo in the Strike Force middleweight division. Uh, he's already fought and lost to the champ. He's ex title holder. He's, he's lost to Luke Rockhold. He's beat Tim Kennedy. I don't know. You know what else there is for him in the strike force middleweight division, but I will say this: as Hector Lombard showed in Bellator, there's nothing like a series of squash matches to build your rep. And Jacare looked deadly, getting a 41 second knockout. Uh, and this is a guy who's a world jiu-jitsu, multiple time world jiu-jitsu champion, not known for his striking, put a beating on Brunson, and uh, really looked good. And then uh, in the title fight, Ronda Rousey and Sarah Coffin. Man, I was one of those people that thought maybe Coffin had a chance to. to connect with Rousey and, and, and make her feel uncomfortable on the feet, but Kaufman did even worse than Misha Tate did in uh, Rousey's last fight. Rousey, uh, everybody knew what she wanted to do. She wanted to clinch. She wanted to get the hip toss. She wanted to get the arm bar. Uh, Kaufman managed to stymie the hip toss a little bit, but still got taken down. Went right to the arm bar. Man, Rousey's hips looked deadly. Uh, it took 54 seconds uh, to get the submission. Um, I'd, I'd give that fight, uh, wait, I'd, I forgot to give the Jack Ray fight a number. I'd, I'd give that one four out of five. The Rousey fight, I'd also give four out of five. Just a great performance, not really a great fight. All in all, I'd give the card four out of five stars. That's, uh, that's, that's my review. This is Kid Nate. As always, if you like this sort of thing, subscribe to our MMA Nation YouTube channel, and I'll be back next week with uh, your MMA of the day. I mean, I'll be back tomorrow with your M MMA of the day. In the meantime, I hope you had a good weekend, and enjoy the rest of it.